holding down your Alt key and using the up arrow on the keyboard that's part of your cursor keys. The up arrow, you can just kind of change the letting like this. So I'm going to pull in like that. Uh, the other way you could change letting in Marquee would be to right click in text box as long as you have text mode on so the text uh, is in an editing state. That gives you this contextual pop-up. Uh, you go to Paragraph Editor and the uh, letting is down here. Um, some people say, oh, it's actually called leading. Nope, it's actually called letting because we used to use lead uh, in a print press, little blocks of lead to separate the lines when they were printing. And the bigger the piece of lead, the more distance there was between the lines. It's neither here nor there. Let's take uh, letters O, R, and D. I'm just going to select. Now what I want to do is either make L big or I can make O, R, and D small. And just because of the size of this thing is taking on, I think I'm going to make O, R, and D smaller. Uh, so to do that, Actually, it's easier to take the L and make it bigger. So to select an individual character you saw earlier that you could, you could scroll down in the layers list and you could find it, um, or just hold down your Alt key and click on it, and mark you will select it directly. Now I'm going to make this text box larger. I could scale it up here just for the L, or just do what I was doing before, hold down the Alt key and just drag the corners. Oh, I just let go of it. Alt key, make sure you get that little up arrow first. Drag the corners so it's nice and big. And we're going to just align it kind of like that. Now the serif, which again is that little decorative part, is kind of tall. I'm just going to let it overlap with the letter L, or the letter O rather, to cheat some space into it. I could choose another font, but you can take the time to go through and find another perhaps more appropriate font. We'll take this box, make it a little bit smaller. We're the, stick it in, oops, where aren't they moved? Stick it in here. So that's uh, the Lord of that. We'll take the word rings and do the same kind of thing. We'll make it really big at first. So option key, scale up. Didn't take. Option key, scale up again. There we go. And we know that for this one we want the R to get really big. So to select indi uh, individual characters, hold down the Alt key, tap on the character. Alt key to the corner and drag to make it nice and big. Kind of like that. It's not really the right R, but it's kind of close to it. Letter I is going to be small, so we'll just tap it like that. Hold down the Alt key and drop it like so. And its baseline is aligned with the baseline of the N. That's what I'm looking at down there. The I is a little bit lower in the top. Yeah, kind of like that. We want to take these two characters in. Now to do that, you can either kind of hold down the Alt key and bring this one over, or you can hold down this one to bring it over, but what we're really adjusting is something called kerning in there. Um, so what I can do is use my text tool, uh, text tool, click between the N and the G, hold down the Alt key, drag to the left, not drag anything, hold down the Alt key and press the left cursor key on the keyboard. Brings the G over, hold down the Alt key, and bring the S over kind of like that. And that gets those done up a little bit better. Finally, down below, we're going to take the Fellowship of the Ring, and I want to really first I want to spread it out. So to spread these characters out, um, it's basically tracking, which is right up here, just kind of like kerning, but it's applied to all the characters. So I'll spread that out like this. You often see bank ads that animate this. So it'll say something like zero percent financing, and it spreads it out like this. Like it's all mystical and amazing. And we'll take uh, this that way. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll show you. Uh, they would do something like this, copy-paste. This up here, 0% uh, financing, APR, I don't know what APR means, A approved, I don't know what that means. Uh, but they use it a lot, APR, and then they would make it big, because the bigger it is, the truer it is, like this. And then they would, uh, they would animate it, so that it would fade up, and then it would Someone would do a voice and say, 0% financing APR, and that slides over like that. So if you're ever doing ads for uh, car dealerships, you've got that little trick in your pocket now. Anyway, back to the Fellowship of the Ring. We'll make this uh, a little bit wider. Uh, what are we doing? This. All right. So it has to be a little bit taller. So tap on it once. Let's take the font size up. Kind of like that. Spreading it out. Again, tracking. Nothing to do with motion tracking, by the way. And then we have to make everything kind of the same font, uh, not font, but the same color. Well, that's where it comes in handy that 
that whole hierarchy that I explained at the beginning exists because we can take all these uh, text boxes. So we'll select them all like that. I selected the first one, hit shift, selected the last one. They're all selected. I'm going to group them together into a new container. And we're going to call this one big container. My caps lock is still on. I don't normally write in caps like that uh, of all words. And OK. So now anything I do with that is going to be applied to everything. So we're going to start out by giving it a base color. And the base color will be something kind of golden. And uh, gold is really kind of like a cross between brown and yellow. Uh, so something like that. And then what we're going to do is map onto it. There's kind of a texture applied here. It's, well, it's, it's gold, I guess. And we happen to have uh, in the section called textures of the marquee library some gold. And it's one of the Avid Supply textures. You might have come in here before and spun down text site, and there's nothing in there, or site textures. Spun down uh, user textures, and there's nothing in there. And then thought, well, this is completely empty and useless. Um, nope, you actually have to look three times until you find something. And over in the Avid Textures section, there's gold. Actually, there's lots of things. There's even giraffe fur. So if you wanted to have giraffe fur, uh, and who wouldn't, you could just drag that over like this. And now it looks like Lord of the Rings uh, safari style. Or we can bring over gold wave like this, and now we have gold wave again. Not the prettiest gold wave, uh, but we can we can work with this. We can work with that. So here's what we're gonna do. One thing that I don't like about it is it's too dense as far as the detail. If you look inside the the T, the H, and the E, especially, and maybe a bit of the O, it's pushing all this 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 texture, this pattern, really really close. Now all of the textures are is uh, or are. It's little patterns like that. It's just like a TIFF file. So if you have a bunch of TIFF files, you can just kind of come up and you can make your own textures by right clicking on user textures and then you pick new and you browse around and you find your your, your picture file and you import it. Uh, it doesn't have to be TIFFs, it can also be like a variety of things, even OMF files. Um, anyway, these are just TIFF files. So they just eventually repeat and when you throw them in, they scale. So for a really big surface, they scale like this, but for really small things like per character, it just tries to jam them in, especially for letter I. See, that's really jammed in. So what you want to do instead is, with this container selected, uh, is we want to modify this texture to stretch it out so it's not as dense. And to do that, we need some controls that you don't have over here in Quick Titles. So I'm going to pop back up to the Window menu and choose Properties and Surfaces. There we go. So now it says the main surface for the container called big container all words is a type texture and it is not tiling and it's being mapped locally to each thing. So I'm going to map it to the container instead. So now it's spread out over the, the red box. Remember the red box is your container. I should just make this a little bit lower. If you look at the bottom of the word, uh, actually it's not even doing, no. Okay. Anyway, uh, so now it's mapped over the entire container. And if you want to, if you want to make it less dense, you just modify the scale of the texture. I can scale it on Y, which is up and down. When I do this, you can see it spreads out. So now it's more of an ambient kind of backgroundy thing, not dense detail. I'm going to scale it a little bit on X2, just so it has a bit of an influence like that. And I'm going to turn on lighting. Lighting puts this imaginary sort of light source. It should be right there. If you take this whole box and you move it, you can see how things get really bright here and they get really dark way down there. Uh, that's just because there's an imaginary light source that you can turn on by clicking on the light tool right there. So there's my light source. You can use it to light up the characters or the text. And I just want to have maybe another one over to the side so that it kind of makes it easy to have kind of shadows. So to do that, you can just right click anywhere. Um, on a Mac, if you don't have your right mouse button enabled, you just use the control key, control click. Uh, I'm just going to add a second light over there, kind of like that. And uh, I'll give you a tutorial on lights some other time. So now I have two lights. And what I need to do next to make it look like this, um, it's hard to see, but there's a bit of a depth on the characters. So that's really easy to do over here in Marquee. I'm going to close Surface Properties because I'm done with that. We have a surface. We've modified it. I'm going to turn on Edge Properties. Now just watch what happens when you click on Change Edge Properties in 3, 2, 1. Did you catch that? How to change the Edge Properties? I'll show you again. I'm going to turn it off in 3, 2, 1. 
exactly. It does, uh, as we say, SFA. It doesn't do anything. So uh, the reason it doesn't do anything is you can change the edge properties here as much as you like, but it's not until you actually change this setting, which is not even in the edge properties box, the one called edge type. Until you change that, nothing happens. So the default edge type actually is none. So you have to not only turn on the checkbox, but also change the edge type. So I'm going to change the edge type to uh, something kind of chiseled, like chisel. And it gives us that, and that, of course, doesn't look anything like chisel text. And the reason it doesn't look like chisel text is to really see edges, whether it's like the edge of a TV or a, of a picture frame or anything, even in the room that you're in right now, to see the edges of the three-dimensional things, it's really, uh, well, the way that you see edges is based on the shadows. Uh, it's the way that they, the way the light reflects off them directly at you or in a different direction that causes you to be aware of the three-dimensional shape because of the shading. So in the absence of lighting on our edges, you don't get any shading and therefore you don't get really any edges. So turn on the lighting and you get better looking edges. You can see them down here now and over there. Of course this color is not really that good. So I'm just going to change the base color to our orange tint. Kind of like that. It's a little bit strong so I'm going to take the opacity down like this. That actually makes the whole thing transparent. So if there was a background in there, you'd actually see it. The other thing I could do if it was a bit too strong is either change the color or maybe take the size down a little bit. Or go back into surfaces and you can actually give it a different texture like the gold wrap itself. To see what this really will look like though in the end, you can't really judge it based on the mode that you see it here in Marquee because this is a preview mode that's used while you're creating content. The 3D shapes and surfaces that you're creating can be quite complex for your computer to render. So Marquee uses a kind of a, a preview or a draft mode. And to see what it really looks like, you go to the render menu and pick preview. And it just previews out this current frame and says, this is what you're gonna get. So I can see that there's a bit too much yellow on the edges, uh, but since the point was to learn about how to manipulate the characters individually and to learn about the hierarchy of containers and text boxes and characters, Hopefully this will get you a bit further along. Once again, uh, this is Woody at Splice, which is an AVID certified training center in Toronto and Halifax, Canada. And this is my quick way of showing you our logo, is just to import it, use the resources we have. Um, if you'd like to get more information on Splice or to attend, attend some training courses, or you get to meet me in person, uh, go to Splice training.ca mc101. Let me move that down so you can actually see it like that um, and get all the details there. So that's it. If you have any other questions or comments, just leave a message either on the Avid Community Forum or you can leave it here on the YouTube channel and I'll do my best to address. Thanks.